life and the crazy nights I figure I should probably give it a try Baby, check it out, see what it's all about But the traffic was fast and the money was slow The people I met you never get to know I kind of miss this place I used to live back home Cause up here it's break Good morning. It's currently O dark 30. Feels kind of chilly outside there, but it doesn't get too cold down here at my place. Well, we got a busy day of just moving everything around. Literally nothing lined up perfectly, job to job, in order to orchestrate equipment drop off. So, gonna take 12, drop it off on a job for our buddy Johnny. Haas is gonna run it while I'm out moving some other equipment around. I gotta move the track chipper and the 080 to do different jobs, and they're both on two different jobs. Actually, the 080's here, that's right. I remember. Just everything's everywhere right now, but let's go ahead and get it. Made it to the last road via the map. Take her nice and wide. They got one of them little ruin your tire items on the inside of that corner. According to the map, there's another side street down here that we can turn around on. Guess we're gonna find out. Guess there's a bunch of chips. Hopefully the 12 can, oh, it's just a circle. Gosh dang, it's even better. Piece of cake. That's easy enough. So, yeah, sure, that'll work. Who's that over there? Sit down. Good boy. Colder over here. By like 15 degrees compared to my house. Gold star time. It's almost freezing, I'd say. Three, two, one, go, go. Morning. Where's your new little hoopty truck? Where's your new hoopty truck? Oh, you didn't buy it? No, it's box truck. Oh. Well, that's just right up your alley for yeah. Fords. <laughs> well, it's got 300,000 miles on it. Oh, so. city miles probably. Nice, right. easy. How you guys doing? Good. Yeah. Perfect weather, huh? Just shy of frostbite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nothing overheat. Right? Yeah. Okay. So this, the septic and leach is on the back lawn there, so you don't have to worry about any of that. And then that pipe. He's uh, is abandoned. The only, the only, the only thing you really gotta watch out for is where those lights are. There's some wiring under there, but you're not gonna even need to really okay. go over there. Just and then it's just basically grew them all the junk. Yeah. So that's so that's the neighbor, and they're a little picky. So kind of just like where we worked. Uh, Johnny's truck is broke down, so he's got a 1500 rental. Just sending her. 
It doesn't fill the dump trailer and tow it with that, but whatever. It's all greased, fueled. Yeah. I thought you put them in the truck. <sighs> Said the screen's frozen up. <coughs> Corona. Oh, Skid Steer's gonna be doing some running around today, boy. So I'm gonna head back to the house, grab the 080 excavator, take it to a job, go back to the last job, grab the chipper. What the hell was that last job? Can't even remember. They're all lumped together. Oh yeah, it's parked on the side of the road. Down the war zone of the last note from. Go grab that sucker. Come back down out here. Help him finish out the day. At some point, somebody's got all some equipment. That's just how it goes. This works out good. I don't have to sit around all day wasting the day or swapping off with Haas. I can just go haul the equipment and get it done, then come back and help. top off the 080 before I take the job because there's kind of limited access on where I'm dropping it and I don't want to block the road trying to fuel it. But your typical machines, all equipment manufacturers, it's kind of nice and convenient and the fact that you can just have one key ring that has 50 keys on it and it covers 50 different manufacturers. Also that means people can steal your stuff uh, easily. This guy has a chip in the key kind of fancy so that you can't actually steal the thing but I'm gonna leave it idling for a second I thought I would go ahead and figure out which one was the uh, Kubota key this one goes to the wheel tractor that ain't it because it's a multi-sided key so the excavator Kubota and then the wheel tractor Kubota are different let's try that one nope I'll pull the key out Talking in that other video, putting a fuel cell right here instead of the skirted flatbed and just getting regular tool locks to add to the back. Really leaning towards doing that. That's a lot of room right there in a 60 cab to axle. Went ahead and greased this thing last night so it's good to go. Didn't need that much fuel, only put a couple gallons in it, but it feels good to get the top. Thought I left the remote up on the flatbed. It's in my pocket. Got lucky. If I was more of a champ, I would have just dropped this thing off last night on the way home. But I was scared because it's it was getting dark. And there's the turnaround spot is just kind of small. And you got to block the road and all that. So just soon brought it home. And we'll get it knocked out this morning. And while I'm out and about, get the other machine. Get it settled up. We're going about the same area. This is a hot. Hot something of controversy wrapping a strap around the cylinder like that I've been doing that for a long time I highly doubt this will ever hurt the cylinder because it's a fabric strap it's rated for 5,000 pounds military grade if that matters anymore but comment below what you guys typically do because the dingle grapple that thing kind of dances around a little bit I don't like putting something over there. I don't like throwing the chain over that. They always end up loose anyway. Can't throw a chain through there because it'd probably destroy that grease zerk and its little coupler thing. I'm not gonna throw one over there. So the strap just makes the most sense. And it's really, really easy to do. End up always having the planetary kind of right in front of the rear axle. So anyway, let's get her fired up and rolling. Yeah. Put new windshield wipers on last night. Let's see if it gets rid of that streakage. Hmm, maybe that helped a little bit. 
I was totally thinking, man, I remember when this road used to be locked down all the time because they're doing so much road work. And I would take the back way, which took a lot more time. Well, guess what? They're still, they're back to the road work. Or probably doing some tree maintenance or something, but we're going to be sitting here for a minute. Dang it. Uh, wide arrangement. Newish Ford. Gasser second gen. And then a Laramie fourth. Huh, whatever. Donuts on the hood of that guy's truck. Cop. Well, here's what the whole fold up is. Got these high side end dumps. Got this link belt just putting the work on it, kind of. Almost ran over a car right here with a semi truck one day. Well, the trailer did. I was hanging left and they tried to pass. And well, stopped just in the nick of time before the trailer ran them over. Going down that road right there. Right here we worked on several, several times. And I can see all kinds of downwood. I'm gonna be bringing the chipper back to this place, but we're gonna go out the end of the road, drop the excavator off. Oh, they cut in their new driveway. Cleared for a house pad up there. Oh, they kind of cut in for the driveway. And then I'm gonna bring the prime tech out here when we start on Monday. Friday right now. Look at that, that gets real tight up in through there. But just go ahead and put her in granny mode right now. Barely big enough. Oh, look at that tree. Uprooted and took the ditch, put it in the air about six feet. Nice. Keep her in rock and roll mode on the RPMs all the way up. I feel like I was just here last week, but I bet you it's been two months. She had a big old pile of brush right here and then there's one in the backyard as well. Pile of logs there. <laughs> So this is going to be a little bit of a story time for you fellas. We, be, we decked these logs here a while back. They're all dead trees. Hazards. I'm going to go ahead and turn around. I'll get in the truck and tell you guys a story. But that was the wood that was left over from all these dead trees. And Mother Nature's taking about a million more of them. So we're going to get all this junk out of there. But, man. Just keep that stuff in mind right now. Look at it. And I'll tell you the story in the truck. Oh, might have to hop out and check the front tire. Okay, cut her too hard. Didn't think I was gonna get enough cut. How you doing back there, trailer? Oh. Just awkward enough that it... Oh, what the hell did I run over there? I don't know, something. Turned around there a couple times before. Wasn't a big deal. But anyway, so check this out. Family just bought this property. Got a heck of a deal on it. Had to pay cash. And there was enough cash that any old family that'd be quite a bit to come up with. And it was just a bare lot. But the deal is, it's got the right of way for the road goes right through the middle of it, so it's access to the neighbors. So, you get little issues like that, so you get a better price on the property. They bought a modular from another piece of property somewhere, packed it up here, got it all set up, finalized, done, installed. They're living in it. They own the place outright. And, I mean, it took a good chunk of cash to be able to do that. They had a bunch of beetle kill trees come through. That's pine trees that just died from the beetle. And they're hazard trees. They hired us to come in and drop them and they were gonna go ahead and clean up the mess so that they could save some money. 
Well, the beetle kill trees, there's no market for it, so they just lay there. As a landowner, you can take your property and cut every tree off of it you want. California does not care. But if you wanted to go and sell that timber, then you have to start filing permits and stuff like that so that you can have the rights to sell your own timber. It's just a way to make sure you don't over molest your property by trying to make profit off of it. So since we're not trying to sell the logs or anything like that, you saw they're all decked up there. They've been there for several months. One of the neighbors called and reported us, reported the homeowner, got to file paperwork on it. They you technically do not need to file because there is no rule there's no law saying that you can't cut down that those trees for firewood. Just some Karen throwing a fit and reported this poor old guy. But they had a whole bunch of other trees go down, so they are gonna hire us to clean up the original mess, which is a huge mess anyway. And then we'll clean up the rest of the storm damage stuff while we're in there. Big old nightmare of a thing. Just neighbors just needing to shut up and just mind their own business. They did the nice thing and took down all the trees rather than a lot of people just they can't afford it so they'll let mother nature just go ahead and take them down and ends up blocking the road and hurting people I haven't heard any stories about people getting hurt from situations like that but i mean it's a pretty big headache to deal with i can't believe that though neighbors want to go ahead and report people for stuff like that so paperwork will be filed under not my lto but andy's lto and uh just some stuff that is completely unnecessary. Just cry baby people. That's all it is. Unjust. Pull over. Had a weird vibration going on. I don't know. Maybe the road just got a little wash going to it. Or the dovetail. It wasn't all the way down, but it was... So I took the back way out of there. Skipped all that traffic. I'm going to take another back way shortcut. So I don't have to go around town I could just go eat oh another roadblock again another one oh, running the flag back there newer every time I see her driving one of 38 15 different trucks in her small world I'll tell you what people another one here I didn't didn't date one of these so it's not as awkward to be held up face to face with them come on now I don't even know what's going on. What do we stop for? Hopefully there's a big tractor up there. We can see something cool. Finally got through 1674 roadblocks. What is that? Huh. Just a big old oak log laying there. Okay. Chipper should be right there. Should be. Okay, good. It's still there. All around, dipshit. You want to tailgate me and then I'm going to stop. Flashy lights. Took another back way to avoid that roadblock. Forgot the gal that we worked for yesterday gave us a little goodie bag full of snacks. I don't know what this is. Tastes like a dark Fig Newton, but it says it's a brownie. I didn't know brownies were supposed to have a fruit hang to it. But... Oh, natural. That's a problem right there. That means goodbye flavor that you're looking for. And I got a tea. Unsweetened. But it's hitting the spot right now, so thank you, lady. Gotta go back through one more roadblock. This, this route just inevitable. I just talked to dad he's about halfway done with his job and then i'll go down there help him finish that pick up the 12. so i think it's about noon right now oh it's already that late man no big deal i've never turned around in this spot but sounds like a good idea holy crap let's take a look at this real quick holy jeez cleared this whole area right here for that uh, shop pad but just look at all these trees top 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 you gotta look up though and you get oh there's a bunch of dead ones so you notice there's these are all tops popped out of somewhere and sometimes they'll come from 
30, 40 feet away. The good gust, huck it, but that snowstorm, they usually just fall straight down. But in the weird case, get a widow maker up there. Hey, squirrel, which would be equivalent to this whole dang tree falling down on you. Look at the big old oak trees fell. Holy crap. And the squirrels are just, is this their turf today? Honestly, very outnumbered. There's a lot of squirrels. They would win. I guess there's more perch guys, I don't know why. <laughs> Jeez. Well, there's a couple cords of oak. Can't chip that. Too big. There's just, there are trees all over the place here. All right, let's get this shipper unloaded. Grab some lunch finally. Head back down there to off. Maybe it'll be done about the time I get there. I'm trying to get down there quick, but getting distracted. This remote control track chipper is such an absolute game changer. If you guys didn't know, bought it from gentleman Johnny that uh, Haas is mulching job for right now. This is his old chipper. He was gonna kind of change careers, but ended up just upgrading. So he sold this, a couple other things, and he bought a bigger chipper, same thing, Bandit, 20 inch though. But I'll tell you what, this thing is freaking killer. This whole combination, remote control trailer, speed binders, the chipper, it makes things a lot easier. What's going on here? I need to idle her up a little bit. It's hard to run it one-handed. Where's she at? Where's she at? Gotta get the old king saw out of the way. Yeah. You want this guy and a fresh battery. I was gonna buy another gas leaf blower here. You bought you bought two batteries, you get the leaf blower for free. So That thing comes in surprisingly handy. Also use it for cleaning off job sites, swap out a battery. I carry the uh, Milwaukee uh, grease gun as well in this guy, got a little side toolbox, super handy. Sounds like, yep, I'm about to say, sounds like the dovetail's dying. I hadn't charged it in a couple of days and we've been using it pretty heavy today. Two year old battery, I do carry a uh, jump pack as well. In case of emergencies like that. Well, there's a little jump box on it right now. Get that tail up all the rest of the way. Option that comes into play right here. Keep enough tools to kind of get you by. I do have a solar panel on the thing too. How you doing? Don't let my neighbor find you. Couple years, especially if you go to a big rack. Okay. Had her on AC. Switch her over to DC. I didn't know that thing had an option, but sure. She fired up a lot better when I did that. Put this little cap back on there just in case throw a binder at it or something. The trailer breaks down. Let's take the scenic route through the woods. Also, just kind of realizing how screwed I would have been if I didn't have that jump back on truck today. I've been carrying that. Uh, Taylor got me that for Christmas. I asked for that. Because the one we normally have is a little bit big. Oh man, there's a tree branch right in the path. I'm gonna have to hop out and take care of that. Somebody ought to clean this mess up. Yes! Watch out! Yeah! Mud dogging. Got my lunch. Hot and ready. Back on the open road. Entertainment provided by Dennis Collins. He found himself a shaker cooter or something like that. Always got the good stuff. But we'll see you guys back at V Belt Job. Racing a side-by-side -side up there. 
Tell you what, this road looks a little bit different. Oh, literally, thanks, Siri. Road looks a little bit different in the daylight. Coming around this hairpin to a single lane bridge. And then a burp hill climb. Looks like somebody's coming down the hill. You're just gonna have to wait. Turn right onto Walter Bennett. Power. I'm gonna wrap this job up. Bolts for about an hour. And then Austin, just a little bit more. Loaded her up. Had a subscriber actually come through. Just finished out his work day. Works for another tree company. Came over, hung out for a minute. But I was gonna take this thing to the next job. But we had a one of the carbides chipped off on it over there somewhere. Haas ended up placing that one finally. And well, she's out of balance now. So I'm gonna take it back to his house. He'll balance it this weekend. And we won't need it for the next job. I'll grab the prime tech from him. But then there's Johnny right now. Look at that. Go ahead and get uh, get this thing balanced, taken care of. Sooner. Oh well, I ended up talking with the property owner and next door neighbor and Johnny for a little bit. We'll get on out of here. Nice neighborhood, people out walking their dogs and stuff. And they got easy access for me to make the corn. Just take her wide. <laughs> Oddly enough, another subscriber dropped by and wanted to chat. All good. Wanted to say what's up, have a conversation with them. I got, I don't have a ton of time, but I got enough time to talk to you guys. You guys ever see me out in public or something? Don't be afraid to stop in, say hello. At least wave, honk, something like that. But it is kind of neat seeing my, you know, people I know running around town all hustling, doing work. Felt like I was doing quite a bit of waving at other buddies driving around today get stuff done so head to the house man look at the sunset oh you guys can't quite tell but there's a nice mountain lion up there ridge lion whatever you call it man holy shit. it's like on the greater end of epic right now oh, all right all right it is currently 11 18 at night wrapping up this edit i felt like i needed to dish out a little bit of uh, legal law kind of stuff that goes into California and trees and remove them from your property because everybody that's outside of California comes up with the misconception that you in California are not allowed to cut down any trees on your property without a permit. If you're out in the woods like this, there is realistically no law saying that you cannot go through, cut all your trees down and burn it up on your own property. Completely fine. If you're in, let's say, town, city area, there's not too many trees in a concrete jungle, so people typically try to favor to keep those around. So they might get mad if you take a couple little, you know, shrubbery bushes kind of out. But out here in the woods, especially if you have dead trees swarming your house, and you cut them down, you pile the brush, and you pile the logs, there is absolutely no reason to need a permit for it. Contractor's license, sure, you're doing that kind of work. I have my contractor's license, we have the LTO, we have all the legality stuff that you need to run a legit business. And what, what happened here is it's been several weeks since I filmed this clip alone. We've already been into this property, cleaned up all the slash, cleaned up all kinds of storm damage, even cleaned some for the neighbors, ground it all up, made it look all orderly, and the neighborhood looks better now that this guy's property is cleaned up. Unfortunate situation, the guy buys property, puts in a house, permits it, does all the nine, and has a bunch of dead trees circling the house. Pine beetle comes in and they'll take a whole crop of trees out like this. It happens all the time. People say it's because of the drought. No, it's just mother nature sending beetles in. It's if you got sappy trees, they smell that, they come in like hornets, 
and they take out all the trees in the area. So the guy scraps, straps together some cash, hires us to come in, tries to do the responsible thing by getting the trees down, and then he also tries to do what's best for his pocketbook, and just has us pile the brush, pile the logs. Industry standards cut these things 33 feet long so they fit on a logging truck easier to ship. In the off chance, we do haul them off. But we don't have any plans of hauling it off because there is no market for pine logs in general and especially dead pine trees. Beetle kill trees, dead wood, it's pretty much junk. There is one place that is quite a jog to get to. Costs about a thousand bucks in trucking to get it there and they do not pay anything for the logs. A chip, chip and plant, they chip it up, burn it, gone. Um, there is no money coming back from that at all. When it comes down to permitting, or uh, needing permits to remove trees from your property or cutting trees down, it is because you are going to remove the logs from the property in order to send them to the sawmill. Basically, if you're going to sell them, barter with them, trade them, whatever, you have to file permits. You're kind of doing that kind of stuff. There is certain restrictions in areas that doesn't allow you to over molest your property. They basically don't want to see a clear cut because they think that you're going to go through and wipe everything merchantable off the property to try making some money off of it. And in our case right now, there is zero money in the logging stuff, which is very unfortunate because there's tons of timber everywhere right now. Most of the time we end up just grinding it up on site and leaving it all there in a mess. Don't even haul it off anywhere because there is just nowhere to take it that's worth our time. If somebody wants it hauled off and not be in chips, then yes, permits will be filed like it should be. We're running a legitimate business. Why would we, you know, try to deface ourselves, ruin our name, get get stuff revoked over something that has zero value to it? So angry Karen, angry Steve, one of the neighbors calls in, files a complaint that we're doing illegal logging operations. They see that we cut them to 33 feet length, so well, they automatically suspect we're going to be hauling this stuff off down in the future not the case we don't there's no market for it why are we going to do that um and then they went as far as saying that the guy did not permit his house and we cut the trees down in order so he could put his house up right there and i thought what a kind of a far-fetched kind of bs you guys got going on here i don't know if that's something that karen came up with government official coming up with that but they want to get in our face and start you know harassing us on that kind of stuff and it's like we literally don't need to file any paperwork it is essentially storm damage mixed with you know just preventative maintenance on a property if it's not hauled off then there's nothing you can't assume somebody's going to haul it off later on down the road and file and give them a ticket for that because of your assumption that's just not how it works so that's where we're at with all that right now um that is literally up to speed on the whole situation there is nothing that karen can get us for nothing that the government can technically get us for if they want to throw the book at us for some stupid bs uh, i highly doubt anything will stick but it's just ridiculous you gotta you know defend yourself on that level when you're just out there doing your job trying to make a neighborhood safer both us and the homeowner but well, hopefully hopefully you guys enjoyed this video a lot of trucking that day um a lot of miles on the old girl a lot of miles that day back and forth crossed four towns they're not big towns, but it's a lot of backwoods driving. We'll see you guys in the next one. Hit them buttons for me. Stay safe out there. Like, comment, subscribe. Later.